Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to do a quick ramen tutorial. So I'll uh, make a bowl of ramen and you can follow along. So there's some things that I've done ahead and I'll explain that as we go along. So the thing to remember about ramen, uh, unless you're just gonna open a package and, and boil, it, boil it up with a package with, with a little flavor packet, there's four parts to ramen. One part is the broth. And I'll talk in a minute about how we're making this broth. But this broth has been um, simmering for a good couple hours. So a good ramen broth takes a long time to make. Um, some of them take as much as 12 hours, but this one is only a couple hours. So it's pretty quick by ramen broth standards. Of course, you'll make enough ramen broth so that you can uh, put it in the refrigerator or freeze it or whatever you want to do. And um, so that's, that's the broth. That's, that's one part. Another part is called the tara, and that's T-A-R-E. And what the tara is, it's actually the flavoring that's in the ramen. The ramen broth itself is very, very lightly flavored. It doesn't have a lot of flavor. Um, you might say that it's um, a little more, more subtle. So tara is like a concentrate. And you can spend a lot of time to make tara, which is not what we're going to do today. The tara that we're going to use is actually a, a, a bullion. And this is um, a paste bullion. It's called Better Than Bullion. Um, it's really good stuff. And this one is a lobster base. So I'm going to take, a, take about a teaspoon of this lobster base, and I'm just going to put it right in the middle of my bowl. And what we'll do eventually is we will flavor, we'll use this to flavor the broth when we put it in. So that's the tara, and that's the second part. The third, obviously, are the noodles, and we are going to use dried noodles. Just so you'll know, full disclosure, we're going to use a package of uh, ramen noodles, but we are not going to use the flavor packet. Right. And when the time comes, we're going to drop these dried noodles into the water. By the way, the dried noodles uh, were actually invented by a, by a guy named um, Ando Mamafuku. And um, he invented them back in the 1950s when uh, Japan was going through a, um, a food crisis, basically. And he figured out how to preserve fresh noodles basically by deep frying them and then uh, what he found is that if you did that, you could reconstitute them in a couple minutes um, just in some hot water. So that's what we'll do. When I'm about two minutes away from putting the ramen together, I'm going to just drop this into this boiling water. So the fourth component of ramen is the toppings or are the toppings. And our toppings today are going to be a little protein. So I have some sliced ham, and this is just deli ham that I've sliced into strips. So we're kind of gonna make fat noodles out of the, the ham. And we're going to fry that up a little bit. So I'll start that. I'll put maybe a teaspoon of oil in the fry pan here. Let's spread that. And you can't smell this, but th that was garlic flavored oil, which is great. So we'll just put those in there and we'll stir them around. And while they're cooking up, I'll get on with some of the other things. Another topping 
that we can use are vegetables. And I've got three, three vegetables. I'm going to be using some scallions. We'll use the green part. And we'll also use the white part. And I've cut them up a little differently. These I've cut across, so they're just kind of little circles. I've cut off the white part of the scallion, and I've made it into, I, I've julienned it, basically. So it's kind of longer, longer pieces. The white part has a stronger onion flavor than the, than the green part. We're also going to use shishito peppers. And these are our fresh peppers from our farm share. And uh, shishito peppers are a Japanese pepper. They're very mild. And we can use a whole pepper, except for the end. And we'll just put those in with the soup later. We'll give this a stir. Turn that up a little bit. And um, another topping that we have will be some mushroom. And this is a baby portobello. There we go. And the final topping I'll talk about in a minute. Let me put in, I'm going to put in our noodles, we'll put those right in there, and that will take about two minutes to cook. So the final topping is going to be our ajitama, which is our marinated eggs, and um, I I showed you how to make these in last week's tutorial, which you can look up. But here's one right here that's been marinating for a day or so. And we'll just cut that right in half. So it's nice and soft in the middle. And that will be ready. Now I wanted to try an experiment. And normally what you do with the ajitama is you boil the egg, you know, for like nine minutes so that it's soft. And then what you'll do is you'll peel it and you'll soak it in uh, some, some soy sauce, mirin wine, and sugar. And what happens is, you know, it absorbs some of that. Looks kind of cool. But I wondered what would happen if I didn't peel the egg, but just cracked it. And I wondered if I would get a marbled egg as the soy sauce was absorbed through the cracks. And in fact, I did. So I have a marbled egg in addition to just my regular egg. So that's kind of fun. So let me cut that one. So I've got two of these. And you want to um, just marinate, marinate those, you know, probably for four or five hours at minimum. And then the maximum would be two days, because after that, it gets too, too salty. And in fact, the yolk will actually start to, um, to absorb some of that salt. So my noodles are just about done. So I'm going to shut those off. You don't want to ever overcook ramen noodles. You want them to be uh, al dente or chewy in the middle. So that's good. 
So let's talk really quickly about our broth. So the broth that we're making today is actually, the, the, the broth itself is made from boiling the shells of mussels. There we go. And so we've got the flavor of the mussels in there. I also have some um, scallions for a little onion flavor. And this big piece here is kombu or kombu, and it's a type of seaweed. It's kelp. And what, the, what we've learned about the kelp, other than it being very healthy for you, is that it has something called naturally occurring glutamate. And some of you might recognize monosodium glutamate, which is a synthetic um, form of flavoring. And it's the fifth flavor called umami. And so this has been boiling for quite a long time. And so it's full of that fifth flavor umami. So that's been simmering. My ham strips are done. They smell great. So let's put it all together. So what we'll do is I'm going to, the things that, that I'd like to blanch a little bit, I'm just going to put those in first because that will end up on the bottom of the, um, of the soup, of the hot broth. And I'll put in some mushrooms that I've cut up. And my scallions are going to be more for a, uh, for a condiment. And one other thing that I'm going to put in now is something called wakame. And what it is, is it's dried bits of seaweed. And what will happen is when I pour in the, um, the broth, it will... Um, Re redo those. All right. Um, the other things are going to be the toppings, and I'm going to put those on top. So what I'll do is let me shut this off, and I'm going to pour this broth right in. There we go. And we have enough for another another bowl so that's nice hot broth by the way it's always good to um, pour into a warm um, a warm bowl so you don't cool things off so let's add our noodles going to just stir that tara right up into the broth. So our peppers have been a little blanched, our mushrooms. So let's put the rest of it together. I'm going to put in my eggs. Find a blank spot there for the eggs. And let's put in there we go. Our, it's not our bacon, but it's our and I'm going to just pour this right around the edge. Just like that. Last thing we'll put in will be all right. All right. So there you have it. It's pretty hot. Let's see if 
heck, it's too hot for me to pick up. So maybe I won't pick it up. I'll just, I'll just taste it here. So here's our ramen noodles. Oh, and by the way, eating your ramen noodles, always have a spoon and your chopsticks. And what you'll do is you'll get some of this broth. You'll get your noodles. And get that spoon to catch them. And it's good manners to slurp. And then just taste some of that broth. Yum. Lots of umami. So that's it for now. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.